Wow. Oh, wow. For a nice piece. Okay, now how does that rate, how does that measure? What are its uh, measurements? It's a couple of pounds. Um, that with my hand there will give a size if you want to take a picture of it. Nice neck piece, you want to buy it? Is that a gold nugget? Yeah. This belongs to an individual that uh, wants to sell it, and uh, we drug it out so a guy could look at it. Uh, he's supposed to be in and uh, look at it, and then it'll go back in the bank where it belongs. Did you get a picture of it? Yeah, could I ask how much you think that might be worth? Uh, he wants 20000 but he's not going to get 20000 He'll get probably uh, fifteen to sixteen, and it's worth that. Uh, larger pieces uh, command a premium price because of the rarity, you know. So I'll put this away. And, uh, what, what percentage... Um, Markup, would you say, compared to their just their their value as Probably per ounce? At least three to one. Three to one. Wow. Mm -hmm. Do you think I could uh, swing that door shut behind you so that the light doesn't? Uh, yeah. yeah. Where close, do you want to close the back door? Yeah. Would that be okay? Would that be okay? Come here, Tess. That was something. That made my day. <laughs> okay, I'm wondering if we could, um, if you could maybe just uh, hold up some pieces and and talk about them and talk about what they're worth. Imagine you're talking to someone who's interested in going out, getting some gold, and he doesn't know where to sell it, how to how to turn it into money. Yeah. Four one two eight two four zero six six two two zero zero. Okay, here is three good, good examples of gold. This is the gold right in the quartz. This is sought after because it is solid enough to cut and polish and makes a beautiful gemstone material and quite rare. Uh, this is a piece that has been eaten out of the quartz with hydrofluoric acid. Whenever you see the chalky color, you know that the hydrofluoric has been used to eliminate part of the quartz and get a good portion of the gold showing. Then this is a natural nugget that's tumbled down the river and uh, worn off a, a lot of the gold, though it's very deceiving. This piece weighs two and two-thirds ounces, and it's over 80 percent gold. Uh, if you were to lift this, the, the go ahead and lift it. To the, it's yeah. really surprising. Now how do you find out that it's not that there's more gold in there? How can you tell that? How do you, uh, how do this, you know? This yeah. is done by weighing it in water and weighing it out of water and get a specific gravity. Okay. Okay. By volume, then they have a chart that they go by. Gold is 19.5 and quartz is about three and a half and they have a sliding scale that they go by and they can pretty well within a very slight margin tell you just how much gold is in that particular piece of rock or etc. They do this a lot with a, a big piece that has gold sticking out all over and if somebody wants to sell it if they're really interested they will get a specific gravity and, and this will tell them the seller should do this because of the amount of gold uh, in the rock. There might be a tremendous amount of gold inside that they can't see. So if he can say that X amount of gold is in this rock, it's been tested, then it brings the price on up. 
I know because I turned down a rock for about a thousand dollars. It turned out there was over three thousand dollars worth of gold in it. I didn't know it. Where do you go to do a specific gravity? Who can do that? Um, in this particular case, uh, a party that used to be at the mine in the testing room, uh -huh. they were set up for it. Is there anyone in town here or not locally? Now. Not no. to, Not to my knowledge, no. But. Uh, I've never bothered to get into the technicalities, but it really isn't that complicated if you have the proper scale and mm -hmm. the figures. Uh, I've never had to use it that much, so I don't worry about it. I, I have enough to do working the jewelry. You know? right. But this piece was found by my dad 70 years ago, and, mm -hmm. and it's uh, a, mm -hmm. a thing that we use it for display, but we won't sell it. I've been offered $2,500 for that piece. Ooh. Yeah. So it's it's uh, a thing that uh, money isn't going to buy it. We leave it out there because it is so deceiving. It looks like it's half rot, yeah. and it isn't. What do, what do you think about the uh, the gold rush going on right now in this area? How does it rate compared to Alaska or any other? Well. Uh, this is a, a, a strange country. I, I lived in Alaska 16 years. I'm very familiar with the mining up there. Uh, it's, it's a different ball game altogether, really. The, uh, you have so much wilderness up there that is untouched. But they don't go for the hard rock mining up there. Uh, very little. There have been a few mines in over the number of years. There's so much placer up there due to the glacial uh, evolution and, and grinding up the rock and everything, there's far more placer. But even the geologists here will readily agree that all the gold rush days, all they got was the surface gold, the loose gold that was uh, through evolution and, and wear of, of uh, the stone and so on gold breaks off, becomes a nugget, and tumbles in the stream. This is all plaster gold. They were quite thorough on the surface plaster gold, but the geologists will ready, readily admit that uh, they think 90% of the gold is still in the Sierra Nevada. Mm -hmm. And I think they're right. They, uh, Sonora is sitting on a huge deposit, and they know it. Columbia is sitting on a huge deposit, and they know it. But federal law now, and incorporated town, you cannot mine under it. So there it stays. But there's so many outlying mines that have never been touched. Look at our old Harvard mine here. They hit that bonanza. Uh, they have the rights on three more mines across the road. One of them was far richer than the Harvard in the 1880s. So there's so much of it that still could be mined. And uh, whether the ecologists and uh, environmentalists are going to let this happen, I don't know. But uh, mining is what this whole country's about, and at the present time, uh, Sonora Mine employs 280 people. They're very good to their employees. Uh, everybody's happy. It's a good thing for the area. Mm -hmm. And uh, bonded to uh, completely clean up the environment, make a nice uh, picnic area and lakes and so on, and, and finish off the topsoil again. I don't see where it does that much damage. Uh, you travel across the United States, you get into the big coal fields and the coal mines, open pit mining. They've made some beautiful resorts from the tailings and leftovers of a big mining operation. Lakes full of fish and camping areas and the whole thing, you know, something the public can enjoy. So. Okay. Um, let's talk some more about a few pieces. Can we look at a few and then see, give your idea of what they're worth and why they're worth that much? Um, yeah. Um, We're going to get some earrings. And maybe what you would uh, give to a prospector who brought in yeah. some of these pieces, how you would, how you'd negotiate with them.
right. Here's a prime example of natural gold right out of the ground. Uh, in, in a sense, uh, people sometimes are led to believe that there's lots of big nuggets all through the Sierra Nevadas. Nice nuggets are, are hard to come by. The, the miners don't find that many readily. The skin divers are the guys that do quite well. Now this year with the rain we had, we anticipate that they will be bringing in quite a bit of gold to us uh, by the 15th of May from then on through August, September. But a piece of gold will say this size. Uh, as soon as a piece of gold becomes one penny weight, then the miner says, okay, that's not gold anymore, that's a nugget, that's worth more money. The bigger the piece, the rarer it is, the more it is worth to the miner and to us. Uh, as an example, a one ounce nugget, uh, you won't find one, hello Eddie, you won't find a one ounce nugget any place for under $900 an ounce if it is a really nice nugget. Simply because there aren't that many available. At Christmas time I had orders for four one ounce nuggets. I got one from dealers. I deal with Alaska, I deal with British Columbia, I deal with a guy that uh, gets uh, gold out of uh, New Zealand. But when they find real nice character pieces, they're readily sold. They're not that available. This is what makes the price of gold go up as you get to the bigger pieces. When you get down to the flake gold, the chunky stuff, this even, these two together will weigh uh, at least a penny weight and a half. All right, that's more than just regular flake gold small pieces. It's worth more. Uh, when you get to the flake gold, uh, it's always really nice. Uh, if it's cleaned up nice, it's worth the gold, daily gold market, whatever. When you get to the fine gold, what do you do with it? The only thing you can do with it is send it in to be refined. So, therefore, the gold is running maybe 80 to 85 percent pure. You're going to pay the refiner maybe 12 percent and hope that he's honest and gives you a fair shake. So the miner can possibly get 70% of spot for his real fine gold. That's all he can get. Okay. How do you get in touch with a refiner? How do you find There them? are numerous companies all across the United States. There's a big refiner in New York. As soon as they, I think possibly they uh, check wholesalers to see who's doing anything with natural gold and, and who's manufacturing jewelry because even the jewelry manufacturer has a lot of grinding and scraps and etc and this is what the refiner survives on is he takes all the scraps refines them back to pure gold and takes a percentage for doing so so, you know, we, it's not uncommon for us once a month to get a flyer from some refining company wanting our business. And sticks, she'll catch them. How much does that nugget weigh? Tennis ball, she says. This particular nugget probably weighs about three quarters of an ounce. I can't get her to smile yet. I'm working on it. And again, how many, how many penny weights per ounce? 20 penny weights per ounce. Um, it sometimes it gets confusing because you get into gold chains and they're going with the grams. But in, in reality, precious metal should be weighed as Troy weight. Troy weight is 12 ounces to the pound, whereas the void boys is 16. And uh, they are two different weights altogether. They, uh, you have to use a formula to break one to the other. Okay, so when, when you said uh, 20 penny weight per ounce, is that a Troy ounce? That's Troy. Troy. Yeah. Okay. When you're dealing in penny weights and grains, it's Troy. Okay. Grams is your other means. This is a, a European, well, I think most other places in the world, they go by grams, just like uh, they're trying to go to kilos and, and all the big change here in the United States that just hasn't happened yet. Mm -hmm.
But all precious metals are cross. Okay. Um, On the world market. How about a little bit about how you uh, make jewelry? Uh, your your da your daughter's uh, welcome to uh, show some of her work if you like. Yeah. Let's move it down to the bar and have the have interview down there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Good. Yeah. Uh, perhaps you could talk to him about making jewelry. I don't know where this video is going to wind up, but. Uh, you might be in the movies, who knows? <laughs> is that okay with you? Would you like to? Yeah, I guess. All right, just some of your handiwork, you know. It looks very nice. I'm impressed with it. I think you got a picture of a pretty girl. That's right, you know. You gotta have... <laughs> you can't have a grouchy old man in it. <laughs> that's right. You gotta have you something know, to keep the, the young guys some interested. Some of the fancy earrings down there and... Okay, well... Let's see you buy those roses? You make them? The we, these, the roses, we buy those. Let's see. These are on your hand. Take my arm off. Get, a nug get that nugget necklace out. That's always impressive. Just tell everybody not to go into the nugget jewelry business. You're overworked and underpaid. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on who you work for, I hear. <laughs> uh, well, I can bother and drive a Lincoln Continental. Man. I don't know. Look at me. I'm driving an old beat up car. Come on, buddy, drink. <laughs> no, I got to go. Now, did you design these Where and make these yourself? Um, yeah. Pretty much, yeah. Okay, I'll be uh, down in a few I've, I did not make these. I'm, actually, I didn't make these and I didn't make these either. No, I made these. This is my own design. Explain these how just... you made that, uh, what you started with and how it came um, together. With these, we start with the natural nuggets and make the 14 karat jump rings and then they're soldered to the nuggets. And then of course you have a bezel with the stone and, and it's just basic um, spot soldering, soldering the rings to the nuggets. And whereas with these, these are cast in 14 karat, and then we solder the natural nuggets to the top and the mount and, the, and then set the stone. And same, same idea with these, the 14 karat with the, uh, we use 14 karat gold solder and solder the nuggets to the, to the piece. And you can set stones wherever. And same process with this. Those are really pretty. How about this necklace? Uh, this necklace, all of the, the jump rings are, are handmade and then soldered. Each one is soldered closed or to a nugget. And it's pretty much just working your way and you can make it how long, however long you want. Or however. What's it like to just have your hands on gold all day? It's it's really fun. It, it's yeah. a lot of fun. You know, you, you don't... When I first started doing this, you know, just I would just marvel at it. And now I, I, I don't marvel at it as much as I do. I, I look for the more exceptional pieces, and then I do and off. Yeah. <laughs> the bigger pieces always excite me. It's delicious looking. Yeah. Nothing like gold. It's, it's rich looking. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any other uh, words of wisdom you might have for aspiring uh, gold prospectors? Or No, not really. The, um, um, it's a tough business. The good claims in the rivers. Uh, where there's a lot of water moving a lot of dirt in the winter and spring thaws. They're pretty well taken up by individuals that are know what they're doing, they're good skin divers, and uh, there's been fortunes. This, this started in about 1960, the skin diving for gold, and uh, 
It's interesting because I lived in Alaska and I was a bush pilot up there and I came down to visit my folks in Chico. And while I was there, two skin divers had moved about a 25 ton big flat boulder in the Feather River Canyon. And they got, uh, back then gold was $35 an ounce and they got 60 some thousand dollars worth of gold out from under that flat rock. And boy, I remember this vividly because it really blew my mind. I'm in Alaska flying these guys and seeing all kinds of gold. But it made me realize how rich actually California and the mother load is. And it still is, you know, but uh, it takes a lot of technology and knowledge uh, for people that get the bug and, and come up and, and pan for the fun of it and have a picnic. I think it's great. Uh, there aren't that many that make a lot of money at it. There's always the exception. Somebody will trip and stumble walking down a hill and find a five ounce nugget, you know, but this is the, the exception. And uh, I have talked to a lot of people that come through here that uh, they're out for a good time and they want to know where they can go pan. And uh, so I'll direct them one direction or the other and, and try to, if, if it's a family with kids, I do my best to get them someplace where it's halfway safe and where they might be able to find some gold, you know. Yeah. Uh, it's a never-ending thing. Every winter, more gold washes out. Uh, erosion, and as I say, there's, there's huge deposits of gold, uh, I'm sure, from here to Reading in the Mother Lode area when you have water and do it. But like he told me, he said, I just, I'm working 18 inches of overburden on the bedrock. And he said, I haven't even tried to clean any cracks. He gets down some of those cracks, he might take five, six ounces out of one crack. Because mm -hmm. that gold is gonna go to the lowest spot. And all these divers, they know that. They'll, they'll look for a crack and then they'll spend three days trying to break into it and get it open where they can get at it. Mm -hmm. Because they get down there and they're just as to find a five-ounce nugget is not, you know. Yeah. Mm. Okay, I 